Do you wish to prevent your opponent from playing Magic the Gathering? Then this deck is for you. Mono Black Discard. This deck is comprised of three parts. A pack of small but effective creatures, discard spells, obviously, and land destruction. Let's talk about the creatures first. Order of the Bone Hound and Black Knight fulfill a similar yet slightly different role. Black Knight has 2 toughness on native first strike, while Order of the Bone Hound only has 1 toughness and needs the black mana to get first strike for a turn. And while Black Knight survives Holy Light on Psychic Purges in games 2 and 3, Order of the Bone Hound, on the other hand, can pump itself for 2 manas which is a great way of using unspent manas mid to late game, especially if an ivory tower is in play, since it provides you a way to overcome the life gain. Depending on your metagame and your preferences, you might want to adjust the repartition to 3 black knights, 3 orders, or even 4 black knights, 2 orders. Stone Swing Devol is a 1-1 first strike for 1 mana, a great 1-drop that wins against Savannah Alliance, Elves and Goblins. Their main role is to help us get to that 80% threshold of having a 1-drop, a Lotus or a Mana Rock in our starting hand. We don't want to play more than 3 copies, since they are not exactly the best top decks ever late game. You could replace 1 or 2 of these with the Rack or even Stormworld if you had red mana sources, but I prefer the Bob Presence Stone Swing Devil Spring early game. Stormworld has the added benefit of being a world enchantment, which sends the Abyss to the graveyard, a very problematic enchantment for this deck. This is a matter of preference and also depends on your local metagame. If a 1-1 first striker does not bring a lot to the table early game where you will play, then just swap them out for some Zorax and or Stormworld. The 4 Hypnotic Spectre are among the most important cards in this deck, along with Aim to Torachis and Mind Twist. This famous 2-2 flying creature discards a random card from your opponent's hand every time it deals them damage, spelling doom for them if they do not handle it quickly. Our goal is to protect it so it can attack before getting hit by swords to plowshares and lightning bolt. So, as much as possible, try to cast your imp to Torachis, Mind Twist and destroy your opponent's white and red mana sources before summoning it, if possible. Black Knights and Order of the Bone Hound are protected from white, so they cannot be used to lure your opponent's swords to plowshare, but they will take the lightning bolts. Order of the Bone Hound is even better at that, as its pumping ability is an extra threat that will force your opponent to remove it quickly from the board. We run a heavy discard line, as it is our main way of preventing our opponent from casting spells. We've already talked about Hypnotic Spectre, next in line is Him to Torach. Even nowadays, Him to Torach remains the most effective discard spell ever printed. Discard 2 cards at random for 2 manas, sign me in. Do not hesitate to cast these aggressively early game, especially against control decks like the deck. It will force the opponent to cast their counter spells earlier than they would like, thus clearing the way for your threats against control. Black Knights, Order of the Bone Hound, and Underworld Dreams. Mind Twist, while outdated in Vintage nowadays, is a premier discard spell in old school. An early Mind Twist, fooled by Dark Ritual, can make your opponent outright lose the game if it hits the right cards. Play sets of sinkholes and strip mines complement the package of discard spells very effectively, as destroying your opponent's mana base early game causes them to be stuck with several 2, 3, 4 and 5 mana spells in their hand. It will prevent them from casting side spells once they've built back their mana base by discarding these beforehand. Destroying your opponent's lands also prevents them from casting some of their outs they might top deck in the next few turns. No need to present Chaos Orb, a card that you should play in every old school deck. Note that, in this deck, it can absolutely be used to destroy your opponent's lands on mana rocks, if it ensures that they won't be able to cast their spell for several turns, with your other land destruction cards. Underworld Dreams is a reliable, guaranteed way of killing your opponent. Against control decks that want to drag the game for a lot of turns, this is deadly, 
especially if they need to draw additional cards with gem datum to find an answer, since it'll deal additional damage to them. It also combos nicely with Tank Twister for a nice 7 damage when it freezes. With multiple Underworld Dreams in play, Tank Twister becomes a win condition, hence its presence in this deck. You can make some changes to make the deck 3 colors by including 4 Badlands on Mox Ruby, which lets you add Wheel of Fortune on Winds of Change if you want to go full force with the Underworld Dreams combo. Train Life lets you finish an unsuspecting opponent in game 1 by eating your unused Dark Rituals on Land's mid to late game. It's also a help against mono red decks that will blast your life points very quickly, but use up their resources very quickly as well. Recovering life can make you survive against these very aggressive decks until they are out of resources, which is also helped by your discard package. Demonic Tutor is mandatory in every deck running black mana in the format. Best tutor in the game, period. This can grab any answer in your deck to any situation. Can get you back into the game by grabbing Ancestral Recall when you're out of gas, etc. Finally, our blue splash in main deck consists of the three blue power cards. Ancestral Recall is the best Magic the Gathering card in history. Drawing three cards for one mana is nuts. Note that in this deck, you can target your opponent with Ancestral Recall when one or multiple Underworld Dreams are in play, if it deals enough damage to win you the game. Time Twister also combos with Underworld Dreams as said earlier, but its main reason for inclusion in this deck is that you can quickly run out of gas in this deck. Cast Time Twister and you're back into the game. Try to have at least one extra black mana available when casting Time Twister, as you can draw Dark Rituals or Moxen that will allow you to cast him to Torachis or Kratios right after the resolution of Time Twister. On Time Walk gives you an extra turn for 2 manas. There is no reason not to run it. This can let you discard one more card with Hypnotic Spectre, set up a big attack by casting an Order of the Man Hand on the same turn, casting a bigger Mind Twist, etc. Try to maximize the value you get out of Time Walk, unless you are under very big pressure. It is a very powerful weapon that must not be wasted. Like simply casting it on turn 2 for an excellent drop, for example. Dark Rituals are mandatory in this deck. A staple for every black deck, Dark Ritual enables explosive starts. Like turn 1 Hypnotic Spectre or Underworld Dreams, turn 2 Black Knight plus into Torach, etc. It's still useful later in the game, albeit not the best top deck in most situations. It can still be used to pump your Order of the Bun Hand or Drain Life, after all. No need to present Black Lotus, which is an auto-inclusion in every old school deck. Same thing for Mock Jet in Black decks. Yet another way to get Knights out on turn 1 or to cast an early thing call if you go second. Mock Sapphire is there to ensure we have enough blue mana sources to cast our blue spells, but can also be used to pay the colorless mana of Hypnotic Spectre, Mind Twist, Demonic Tutor, Drain Life and Chaos Orb. We have enough black mana sources to play Mock Sapphire rather than an additional City of Brass. I've already talked about Strip Mines, they are solely here to destroy lands, although the colorless mana can be used for the 10 spells in main deck using colorless mana. To help cast our blue spells, we run 4 Underground Seas, obviously, and 3 City of Brass. We have a very aggressive deck, and we need to ensure the blue mana source to cast our power cards. Running City of Brass has two downsides. First, it deals damage to us, which makes us weaker against other aggressive decks, like Mono Red. No real solution here. I'd rather be able to cast Ancestral Recall, Time Walk or Time Twister against every other deck, rather than not running blue. These three cards are that powerful. They weren't the 9 blue mana sources main deck to reach a 74% chance to have one on our first turn, and 88% on turn 5 when casting this blue power card is either going to put us back into the game or help us finish the opponent. Second, it makes us weaker to Blood Moon. Most players when playing against Mono Black will assume we run a heavy count of swarms, which is not exactly the case, 
that will dissuade them to include them in games 2 and 3. We are not exactly dead against Blood Moon though. We run 13 mana sources that are impervious to Blood Moon in main deck. Depending on your metagame, you might want to increase the basic swamp count, but I don't think it's needed and that would hurt the stability of the deck. Steady access to blue mana is especially crucial in games 2 and 3 against control deck, like the deck, a deck you are pretty much guaranteed to encounter at tournaments. We run one herbal. If there's a ton of blood moon where you play, this is the one land that can be replaced by your basic swamp. It is an important card for the mirror match, as it removes first strike from opposing black knight on order of the bad hand. It also removes swamp walk from Sulkanar, a big 5-5 creature that is sometimes sighted in in games 2 and 3. Finally, we run 10 basic swamps. This is the absolute minimum to be resilient against Blood Moon. It gives us about 65% chance to have two basic swamp or mock jet plus swamp by turn 3, which I consider acceptable given we also run 4 dark rituals to help us cast spells in games 2 and 3. Replacing our Borg by an additional swamp raises that probability to 70%, which has its merits. Once again, if your local metagame is plagued by blood moons, then by all means replace our Borg by a basic swamp. Onto the sideboard. Gloom is devastating against any white deck, especially if you cast it early game with a dark ritual. 4 mana Savannah Alliance won't look so awesome all of a sudden. It helps protecting your hypnotic specters against swords to plowshares, as this will cost 4 manas to cast with Gloom in play. It also helps maintaining your underworld dreams in play by raising the cost of disenchants to 5 manas. Combat witches are your best weapon against goblins, since most of them only have 1 toughness. They are also useful to snipe mana ramp creatures like Birds of Paradise, Lanower Elves and Elves of Deep Shadow. A second copy of Drain Life helps against Mono Red as a way to gain more life, and against Zudek as an additional removal against small creatures, like Curd Apes and Argosian Pixies. Terror is another tool you can use against Zudek, and is very effective at removing big threats like Serendib Fritz and Airnam Jeans. It's also good at removing other flayers like Serangel that would block your hypnotic specters in their path. City in a Bottle, same thing. Zudex, especially blue, red, green version, run a lot of Arabian Knights cards. Curd Ape, Serendib Frit, Anam Jeans, City of Brass, Library of Alexandria. It also removes your own Arabian Knight cards and prevents you from playing any of them. So, when siding in this card, you should remove the Stone Throwing Devolts as well as one or two City of Brass. To replace the City of Brass in game 2 and 3, we have one Basic Island. This basic island is also here in case we side in the blue cards that we are going to talk about. Energy Flux and In the Eye of Chaos are your two main weapons against the deck in game 2 and 3. Energy Flux makes all artifacts have an upkeep cost of two colorless manas. The deck plays a lot of artifacts. All of the Moxon, Felwar Stones, Soul Ring, Gem Detoms, Disrupting Scepter, or Ivory Tower in some versions. Energy Flux is absolutely devastating against these decks, so more than ever, try to cast your discard spells before casting it. If you hit this enchant with him to Torach, it will help protecting your Energy Flux a lot. In the Eye of Chaos serves two purposes. Firstly, it makes all instants cost twice their usual mana cost. The only instant in our deck being Dark Rituals and Ancestral Recall, we are basically not affected by this card. On the other hand, our opponent will have to pay 4 manas for their counter spells, mana drain and disenchant. Couple that with our heavy line of land destruction, and our opponent will have a hard time casting these permission spells once in the Eye of Chaos is in play. Secondly, in the Eye of Chaos is a world enchantment. This means that the Abyss is sent to the graveyard when In the Eye of Chaos comes into play, which offers another way to remove that problematic enchantment, in addition to the previous benefit of doubling the mana cost of all instant spells. 
Finally, Greed is there for the mirror match, as drawing more cards is your best option against other discard decks. It's also useful against control decks that won't put a lot of pressure on your life points, in case the game lasts a long time and you need to draw extra gas to finish the game. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can leave your feedback in the comment section, positive or negative, I will appreciate it. Let me know if you like this format, if there are points that can be improved, and if there are other aspects of the game that you'd like me to talk about. Next video will be a Pokemon one. I will talk about base set, the first expansion of the Pokemon TCG. I will try to alternate between Magic and other games. I will primarily post Magic videos on this channel. I will also post old school Pokemon on Yu-Gi-Oh from time to time. Until next time.